Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got the RC390 here, and the goal for the day is to get the engine out. So we're gonna start by stripping everything off and figure out what we have to go from there. Let's get started tearing all the body work off. And just like that, we got all the fairings off. We're back to the point where we were like two videos ago. Um, I'm gonna drain the oil out of it. We're gonna take a look at that. And then I'm gonna start taking stuff uh, off the bike, gas tank, everything. Try and get as much stuff away from the engine as possible. I haven't looked up anything on how to actually drop the engine, so it's gonna be kind of flying by the seat of my pants, which is usually how it goes. So let's get right into it. There's not a lot of oil in this bike. <laughs> What's this? Ah, there's a filter in there. <laughs> it's like, damn, that's not coming out at all. There's a couple little bits in there. Kind of looks like RTV. Not really metallic. While I'm in here, I'm gonna pull the oil filter out too. Is there a torque down there pretty good? Well, you get this thing out. <laughs> Gonna get a magnet. So yeah, good news with the oil filter. There doesn't seem to be anything metallic in the pleats. So hopefully the engine's in pretty good shape. With the oil out of the way, we're gonna drain the coolant. Let's see, I think it is this bolt right here. Let's find out. Yep, it's got that copper washer. And then we're gonna crack the radiator a bit. Radiator cap. Why is this cap so stubborn? There we go. The air cap looks like it's got some interesting buildup on it. Not sure if that's from oil mixing in there. It kind of looks. Uh, it kind of seems like the rubber's breaking down. The rubber looks fine. Feels very rubbery. Doesn't matter. We have a new cap. So yeah, this is what the oil looks like that came out of the bike. This is the stuff that I drained off the last time when I saw it was overfilled. And this is what it should look like brand new. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. All right, so this is the, the oil that just came out. I don't see any real indication that there's coolant in there. Although, kind of you can see there's some separation from the one that I let sit for a bit. And this is what brand new oil looks like. So, not sure if that's a mix or if that's just been running through the engine long enough to get a little darker. Yeah, I don't know. 
kind of a big difference though. Anyway, we're going deep. And then the coolant that came out looks totally fine. Doesn't look like there's any oil mixing with the coolant. All right, now that we got the coolant and oil out, a couple preventative measures here. Key out and no oil sticker on. Oh, come on. There. So next up, I gotta figure out how to get the gas tank up. I'm guessing it has something to do with the battery compartment here. We'll dig in there. Uh, there's a lot going on. We're going to disconnect the battery and pull it out anyway. Oh. Is there not a battery strap? There is a battery strap, it's just not on it. Cool. We're going to take the battery out. Drop it, don't drop the washer, don't do it. Yeah. Dude, this thing is light. I'd say this thing weighs like, I don't know, a pound, pound and a half. Does it say on here? No, but it's light. Looks like it probably didn't have to do that. There's a, a bolt on either side here from outside that holds the front of the cover on, I think. And then we got the like bolt in the rear. So let's see if we can get this off out here. My guess is that I gotta get this little rear stay off. I could be wrong about this. We'll find out. Is it really caught on the top of this? Uh, I was really hoping I could get this off without pulling the tank lid off, but I think, I think this has to come off. Yeah, pretty sure we gotta take this off. It almost looked like it would slip around it, but not quite. I'm so glad there's so many missing bolts because things just pop right off so easily. Yeah, this whole cable was just like flopping in the breeze. This wasn't tied to this. I think it was sitting pretty much like like that or something. <laughs> so I guess we'll get a bolt on there when I put this back together. All right, next I think I'm going to try and get this box off. There are two bolts and an Allen key in there. So we'll get that off, hopefully be able to pull the wires out and then work on the tank itself.
All right, now we get to play find all the connections and how to remove them. I probably don't even have to take this box off, but. New plan. <laughs> Tank's gonna come off first because most of these wires are routed under it. All right, the things holding on the tank would be these guys here. Actually, I think it's these two and this whole bracket comes with it. Hopefully, if not, I'll take this off, but I think, I think I can take this off and pop it forward. And then there's gotta be something holding on to it up front, which I think are Actually, the bolts I took off into this box. So, order of operations thing here. Let's get uh, these guys off. holding this guy on. I think it's actually loose. So we can pull this thing away a little bit. Give us a little bit of room here. And I think I can pull this back. Maybe I can pivot it up and see what it's connected to. All right, let's take a look. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, lots of connections in here. <laughs> we'll start with the vent lines, I think I can get those off. First. All you can see is my hand. Oh man, and these hoses are pretty well stuck on there. Get a tiny little screwdriver, see if I can get that off. Or maybe this pick actually, just to break that seal. I was on there super tight. All right, we got one. Oh, it's super hard to see. Now all these, all these are next. Let's see if I can just use my fingers to get these out. A little bit of fuel. At least they're quick disconnects and not like some crazy fitting that I can't toss. Oh, it's a lot of fuel all over my hand. Can somebody answer me why automotive connectors are like the hardest thing to get off and they're all completely different? Oh yeah, much easier from this side. I really wish I hadn't just got gas before I decided to do this and fill up the, the whole tank. That connection is gone. That's a little vent line over here. I think we're good to go.
So I know that was probably hard to see. These two are the fuel lines and fuel's dripping all over the place. Let me get a rag in here. And then uh, this was the hard connector that was easier to get from the other side of the bike. And then there was this vent line and this vent line. Let me get a rag in there, there's tons of fuel. So while I'm in here, I'm just gonna take off this floppy charcoal canister, whatever this is, event canister. I don't know, this thing, which I think is only connected by this hose currently. And if I have my way, it is not going back on the bike. I haven't looked into the delete for it, but this is like a spaghetti monster that I just don't need to be dealing with. Also, this coolant overflow is so long. It's so long that I accidentally routed it poorly and burned it on the exhaust. Uh, totally its fault, not mine. Yeah, we're gonna take that off too. <laughs> it's this floppy mess just hanging out everywhere. And this kind of looks like it's only held on by one bolt. Is that? Is that what I'm seeing here? Oh, is that bolted all the way through on the other side? Uh, all right, let's take the other one off. So this one, yeah, I think, I think this bolt goes, give me a camera. I think this bolt goes all the way through and grabs the other one. I was like, how is this thing held in there? But. Take this one off first. I don't know how big that is, but it's pretty big. Let's try for an eight mil. Oh yeah. I will stop abusing my hand. Well, we're definitely at the point where I have absolutely no idea what needs to come off next. So I'm going to start with the air box and then try and work my way through the electrical connections up here and then probably to the radiator exhaust and hopefully that'll get me enough clear that I can start dropping the engine. But uh, yeah, first with the air box here. This nice rapid bike Evo to check in to see if I can see what the uh, tune is on this. Hmm. What, uh, what do you think this is, too? It's just like randomly sitting in there. Alright, how's this air box come out? Snorkel looks like it's free. And oh, the lid isn't even like properly seated. Alright. This out of the way. I want to see if I can pull the whole thing out. And it looks like it's bolted in. These two and probably one in the bottom and hopefully I can just yank the whole thing off. I wonder if 
there's a bolt in the air box it's actually holding this on. The air box looks like it's been glued. So hopefully it's not broken. How is this connected to the intake? With a snorkel and an Allen. Alright. Uh, what size? That's a tiny little Allen. My guess is a three. Let's see if I do it. Oh, and it's just oh, perfect. It is a three. Alright, loosen that up a good amount. Appears to be some uh, breather tubes on here. One. And then there's one up front. There we go. I think it does actually have to go backwards a bit, so let's pull the snorkel off. So these tabs prevented it from coming out because it had to move back far enough that those tabs got into here. Yeah, this was uh, this was the ceiling on the air box. It wasn't in the tabs at all. It just bolted right in. Should probably stuff something down into the intake, make sure we don't drop anything in there, like a bolt, because I've been known to do that. This is nice and tidy. Whole tail section is kind of tidied up. Let's say we have some uh, problems with the air box here. <laughs> Looks like somebody probably broke some stuff off of it and then glued it back on. Maybe I don't know. This definitely looks like glue. And this does too. Oh, it's open up. What is that? There's like spooge coming out of this thing. Let's open this thing up. We need the heat. Yeah, I don't know. This this looks like it was glued. So this looks like a pretty dirty K N filter. And there is a uh, liquid in there. I don't know if you can see it. See like all of this right here. What has me interested is whatever is going on right here. It's like some foamy... I don't know, it smells... It smells like gas almost? Oh, and now it's turning into like water? What the hell is that? I don't know what this is, but it's full of, uh, full of whatever the hell this is. I have no idea what that is. I kind of want to blow on one of these ends because it <laughs> looks like it's like packed in there. Huh. Okay, well. And this is dripping on me now. Maybe that's where our uh, coolant was escaping to. Going through the air box and into something. Weird. 
I don't know. I'll block that intake off with paper towel real quick. Especially because there's a lot of liquid around here, especially coming out of this line, which I really want to trace where that comes from. So it's going into the air box from. So the lower portion of the of that connection on the air box was a line that's actually coming from the what looks like the crankcase and. Yeah, so this is that the lower line. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but it's like absolutely filled with that white fluid or that like foam. So it seems like it's getting pushed up through the crankcase, probably where our coolant was going into the crankcase, getting, I don't know, turned into foam and then thrown up through the airbox. I'll have to see where this line here goes. Because there's liquid coming out of that. But we'll worry about that when the engine's up. Alright, so we got the air box off. Let's go for the, what did I say was next? Cooling system? Or did I say electrical stuff? I don't remember. Hmm. Let's see if we can disconnect some of this, get it out of the way. That's wired in. This is these are fuel. Let's see if I can disconnect this section right here. Actually, let me get a rag first and learn my lesson with this. Spill fuel everywhere. Come on. Quick disconnect my butt. All right, splash gas everywhere. This filter looks pretty gross. All the grounds right there. All right, what else is holding this in? We've got a quick tap and what looks like two connections here. And then this side is probably blocking the shock, my shoulder. Where does this go? These are the two green plugs. So this whole thing should be able to come out pretty easily. So if you can see it, there's that little uh, this little tap right here. I'm gonna take that off, but I'm gonna note that it's on the green and yellow wire. Yeah, looks like the green and yellow wire. Yep, green and yellow. Everybody remember that. Wow, these chew up the, cab the cable that you're tapping. It puts a hole right through it. These things seem stupid now. Right, I'll figure out something to do with that. This way I don't have to remember at all. I just know that the white wires and the white connector goes to the white connector. Cause it's probably gonna be a while before I put this all back together and I'm not gonna remember. That's that connection. Looks like somebody else had the other idea. They marked this one black. <laughs> I didn't notice that till right now. Cables out. This whole harness hopefully comes out pretty easily here. Got another couple of connections that look the same. So white on here, white on here.
tiny though. What else are we connected to? <laughs> There's so many connections here. All right, I got two down here. Let's try this one first. These side releases. Every single connector is different. Tiny screwdriver. There's that one. Now this one down here. Should just be able to press it with my finger, I think. Oh, yeah, there we go. Totally not keeping track of how all of this was routed, which is probably gonna bite me in the butt. All right, and then you up front. All right, I could probably disconnect it to the front of the bike or. I think these are connected to are these engine connections. I can't tell, I'm just gonna take them out. One of these is gonna need some paint. I wish I could get to you, but my hands are too big and there's too much crap in the way. Maybe that can buy me a little bit more space. Move these around. This little emissions canister, this is connected to the head, I think. There we go. This can slide off. Okay. Get to that hose clamp. And then there's a sensor down there. There are so many things on this bike. This guy right here. All right. This guy. <laughs> Wind you back. Ah, so you have to lift the little center. Once I pull this out, I'll show you. Looks like you would push down on it, not lift up on it. Which means I can pull this whole harness off now. Yeah, these connectors suck. You have to lift up this little piece right here to release from this little wedge. Let's uh, let's get the radiator off. All right, first for the cooling system, I'm gonna make a ton of noise with my little roller. We're going to pull this shroud off, and it's a uh, size four hex in four little spots. One's right here. 
Oops. Wow. That's long. So there's one up here, one down here, and then the opposite side as well. And they've got spacers. Fun. Let's not lose these. Make my life a little easier. I'm gonna cut off this uh, the zip ties holding this flappy boy on on both sides. It's gonna have to come off anyway to get to that bolt, and it'll make my life easier to get this hose off. Got this little guy right here. Alright. There we go. There we go. So close. You're so close. You got it. I believe in you. Yeah. Sweet. Let's take the rat off now. These tens, yeah. Tons of tens on this bike. My favorite. Why is the connection not close to the fan? Why is it rounded up into a junction box? What is this? And there's a tab right there too. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, probably best to try and uh, undo the fan before you undo the radiator. Let's pop this back on the studs real quick. Put a bolt on them. Alright, so that fan connector is right there. <laughs> That one, right there. Like, next to impossible to get to. <laughs> Spin it around, push it, and pull out the bottom. <laughs> oh my god, I got it, I got it. <laughs> so that's the fan. I got a nice upgrade for this one, one of those spall fans. So yeah, I can't tell if there's a leak somewhere in this radiator and it's hitting the fan and spraying it around, or if uh, this is just road grime. So, hey, can you stop focusing on the bike behind? Yeah, so I'll take the fan off and I'll check the radiator to make sure it's not leaking. Like I said, I didn't see anything under the bike, but you know, this kind of looks like an explosion. So in an effort to make some more room for myself, I'm going to take the exhaust off. And I think that will help kind of allow me to get to some of the, the wires that are run inside the frame. Get this off. This must have been a pain in the ass to install. So yeah, I'm like down in here. in the back of this bolt. This bolt is way too long for this. This damn bolt is this long. It needed to be like, I don't know, maybe that big. And it would have had plenty of engagement. <sighs> Try and get the can without dropping it. Let's find out. Oh, it's still clamped. Can 
Can you make the bend in one piece? Or am I gonna have to undo part? Oh, oh, oh. And she's up. Perfect. I'm gonna give my give it my best to get this sensor off. I'm sure it's on there pretty tight. Let's see. Oh, that actually wasn't too bad. I was ready to start pulling out like PB blaster and stuff. Tens? Oh no, they're twelves. Oh, those were like not even tight. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of looks like somebody ground this down just to get that uh, exhaust in. I mean, it was a tight fit, so I believe it. We're getting down to the last little bits, which is nice. Um, just got to get the shift linkage off. That's the wrong way. Um, and then uh, we got to take the sprocket cover off because it's actually attached to the frame and I'm gonna just get all broken up anyway. I'm gonna take off the bracket on the bottom for the lower fairing and up here because uh, I know I'm gonna munch it if I don't. And then we gotta break the chain and there's two wires on the opposite side that I need to pull off. There's a ground wire and I think the starter wire. Um, I gotta double check. I gotta cut the ties for these and I gotta double check if those are disconnected. And then, did I say break the chain? Gotta break the chain and pull the clutch line off. So, I don't know, it feels like we're almost there, but not really. There we go. Ah, oh, that's dirty. I just washed my hands too. And I would be using gloves, but uh, there's, there's a little bit of a shortage of those right now. So. Eight. close to dropping this engine out. Just got like a couple more connections and then it's gonna be mostly the, uh, what are they called? Uh, engine mats, engine mats afterwards. Just gonna pop this off. The last few connections that I have, I got the clutch cable and then there's two, there's a grounding point and the starting, uh, the starter wire. Actually I think they're both going to the starter, but those two 
this and then hopefully it'll just be taking out some of the um, engine mounts and lowering it down with a jack. So I loosened up the clutch cable at the handlebar. See if I can get this to... The rubber boot was already messed up before I even got to it. Just want to grab it. I don't want to fray anything. There we go. You're done. And I can just wind you back from here, I believe. Oh, gotta undo that nut. See if I can get to this. Oh, that's a 10. And then I think I'll need a wrench for that one. The 12. Oh, it's a 10. They're both 10s. 10s all around. Okay. This will be tedious because I don't have any ratcheting spanners. Oh, and it's like a terrible angle, too. Hmm. That's disconnected. I think the worst part is I'm totally gonna forget about this when I'm putting the bike back together. And then realizing I have to contort myself into some weird angle to get in there. Oh, it's so close. There we go. That is a long, that is a freaking long bolt for holding that ground on there. All right, that's done. I'm going to put a jack under this guy and we're going to start disconnecting engine mounts. Overall I think this is going to be pretty interesting because I have no idea where the center of mass is on this engine so my guess is it starts rolling forward on me and I'm going to have to catch it and it's not going to be pretty. This long boy really didn't want to come out of there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take these brackets off. So I think that's really the only thing that's holding the engine in is just the lateral force of those brackets. Engine seems to be pretty well balanced right now. It is leaning forward so I'll have to catch it. I'm just going to get these out of the way so i got more room to work. And then we're going to slowly lower it down with the jack and see if we're caught on anything. Hopefully I managed to get everything. Looks like we're clear. Let's see if I 
going to pull it out. Lost the sensor. That is a hefty engine, but I think I can muscle it. Woo! It's your boy. That's not going anywhere, as Rod, Rob Dom would say. Whew. She's a weighty girl. All right guys, it took me a couple days, but the engine is successfully out of the bike and we can start cracking into that next. Wasn't too bad overall. It took me about two days, um, maybe about four hours total. And I probably took a lot more off the bike than I really needed to. I just kind of wanted to be as open and clear and just kind of get my hands in wherever I needed to, which was nice because there were some connections, especially right down in here that were just abysmal to get to. But here we are, engine out. We're gonna do a whole bunch of upgrades while it's out. I'm gonna send the head off to get decked. Hopefully we can improve a couple other things in the engine while we're in there. I might try and get some uh, titanium valve seats and uh, what else is in there? Oh yeah, I need a new water pump and the seal that goes on the outside. Hopefully the inner seal's not backwards because that would involve splitting the cases. I really don't want to do that. That was a little bit more than I wanted to bite off. Is that, is that the phrase? Anyway. So, yeah, engine out, super stoked. Gives me a bunch of stuff to work on now. Check out this ridiculous pile of parts behind me. This is just everything I took off and just kind of organized. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garage on this one, and I'll see you next time.